To read the composition of these ternary phase diagrams, we use the grid lines that are perpendicular to our pure component. So for example, let's look at our carrier, C. So you can see that the bottom axis tells you the mass fraction of our carrier. Therefore, the bottom right-hand corner, which is labelled with a red dot, must be our pure carrier. The axis opposite this, which is coloured in blue, represents zero carrier. Any point on this line only contains solvent and solute. The mass fraction is then given by the grid lines parallel to this 0% axis. So, for example, we can see that the plat point lies somewhere between 40 and 60% of our pure carrier. And it's slightly closer to the 40 than the 60, so the plat point is about 47% carrier. For a single stage extraction system, we can produce a mass balance for the process. We know that the overall mass added in the feed and the solvent must be the same as that that comes out in our raffinate and extract products. This total amount is also the same as our mixed point total mass in the middle. We can also do this balance for each of the components. For a general component, we would have the amount of that component in the feed plus the amount of that component in the solvent gives the total amount of that component at the mixing point which also equals the amount of that component that comes out in the raffinate plus the amount that comes out in the extract product. If we take two of our components and look at a mass balance between our feed solvent and our mix point, in this case we've taken our solute and our carrier, though we could have easily also used the solvent. What we can do is we can combine these equations together with our total mass balance to get a ratio between our feed to solvent. This can either be written in terms of the differences between the solvent amount of solute minus the mix point over the mix point minus the feed amount for either our solute or our carrier. If we just take these two ratios, we can actually rearrange them into the equation below. So the equation at the bottom of the slide, you can see, has been written in terms of the composition of the carrier at the mixed point, a value dependent only on the compositions of the solvent and the feed, times by the composition of the solute at the mixed point, plus another set of parameters only from the feed and the solvent. This form of equation is a straight line, so we know that our mixed point composition must lie on a straight line between our solvent composition and our feed composition. So we know that the mixing point must sit on a straight line between our sol solvent and feed compositions. So the point along this line is determined by our feed to solvent ratio. So we've already seen that this feed to solvent ratio can be given by the amount of solute in the solvent minus that at the mixing point divided by the amount of solute at the mixing point minus that in the feed. So if we think about this in terms of our ternary diagram, we can see that the ratio between the feed to the solvent is given by the ratio between the length of the line between our solvent to our mixing point divided by the length of the line from our feed point to our mixing point. We can also generate these ratios for other combinations as well. For example, the, the feed to the total fraction can be given by the length of the line between the solvent to the mixing point divided by the feed to the solvent. In this example, we're given the amount of feed and the composition of the feed plus the amount of solvent and the composition of the solvent. And what we want to do is calculate what, and what we want to do is calculate the position of the mixing point using the lever arm rule. First thing we can do is use our data about the composition of the feed to plot our feed point on this ternary diagram. Then we can use the information about the solvent composition to plot our solvent point 
on this ternary diagram. And we know that our mixing point must lie on a straight line between these two points. So as we know the flow rate of the feed and the solvent, what we can do is use the version of the lever arm rule that relates the ratio of the feed to solvent flow rates to the length of the line from the solvent point to the mixing point and the feed point to the mixing point. So our feed is 400 kilograms and our solvent is 100 kilograms. So this gives us a ratio of 4. So what we know is that the length of the line between the solvent and the mixing point must be four times that of the length of the line between our feed point and our mixing point. So we can see from our ternary diagram that we have a length of the line from the solvent to the feed point. And we can put our scale on this and then we can draw our mixing point so that the length of the lines are the appropriate ratio for our lever arm rule. We can then read the composition of this mixing point off the diagram. What we can see is that we have 20% A, 60% our component C, and 20% of our solvent component.